Excellent. All right, hey guys, we're back. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> Four viewers. We're back, and apparently no one can chat in the channel. Here, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so if we you're apologize chatting, for Twitch's insolence. Yeah, actually, this is uh, my DM powers at work. I've disabled chat for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Hate the DM. Yeah. Yeah. Don't hate the DM. He's only trying to kill you all the time. <laughs> Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Is that? Yeah. Thing here? Yeah. Pretty much. Exactly. So yeah, where we last left off, uh, Arthur and Oren wanted to speak to some guards or some official little type people about the flying cat bat thing that melted <laughs> when it got killed. <laughs> Let's face it, I don't care what that thing is called. Its official name is Cat Bat Thing. <laughs> cat Bat. That's, that's what I'm going to put in the kill list now so you guys don't actually yeah. know what it is. Okay. We'll still <laughs> right. know. You'll still know. Yeah. Cool. So you, uh, yeah, you guys head out. Let and me know when I wake up, please. So, yeah, <laughs> sure. I guess me and Alpha head out and we ask God where they're like main bases or like their barracks so I want to talk to his superiors officers pretty much oh I went oh, back to okay the clear or back just to rest, okay just to rest I guess because I get interrupted a little bit okay well I mean you're you're probably still finishing up breakfast but yeah you go back to bed pretty quickly after that all right yeah um so uh let's see you found a guard and you asked to see his captain Basically, uh, basically, where I could find his captain or a uh, higher-ranking officer, pretty much. If um, captain's not the highest, like if there's like a general or. He, I mean? he says no, no. Uh, the captain of the guard is uh, our top guy. Um, he, and he gives you instructions where to find him. Yeah, and I look to Arthur and say, "Shall we?" Uh, yeah, let's, uh, that's not too far from here, but let's try to hurry. I do want to help Matt and, and Amareth get everything ready. Fuck me. And I, I know I'm lead on. Alright, so you guys head over there. And there are some guards. <laughs> what gonna, do you do? I'll, I'm going to casually approach the guards and put my hand up. It's like, excuse me, friend, I'd like to speak to your captain of Pretty much great importance. All right, yeah. Uh, captain's uh, just inside the building. I, I give him a nod and say thank you. Then I go in. All right, you go in and there's some guys there and there's a dude behind the desk with you know fancier armor. He's pretty easy yeah, to spot it's... that he's the captain. Yeah, or I can definitely tell this guy's the captain. Um, yep. He's got an. He's talking to people with an authoritative tone. He's sitting down at his desk, but like the people are, you know, yeah. all at attention. Excuse me, sir. My name is Owen Darkstrider. Uh, like one to moment, please. You. One moment, please. He kind of points to one of the guys uh, and like, you make sure patrols are going well. I don't want that William slacking off anymore. New. Damn it, William. You know your job. Make sure you do it this time. If I catch you in the tavern again, you're going to st spend a day in the stockade. Can we get a roll for how impressed his impressive... Uh... How impressed his impressiveness is? <laughs> yes. <laughs> how impressed is Orion? Oh, no, no, you don't even need to roll. I'm actually quite impressed. I'm like looking at this dude and I'm like, wow. Okay. Yeah, He's he... He's a man like him. He... Yes, he is very authoritative. <laughs> he he's critically authoritative. <laughs> and he is powering. He, he's yeah, like, oh, no. <laughs> he gets Please, up. Sir. Yeah, so he gets up one hand behind his back and said, "Please sit down, sir. You had something that concerned you." Yes. I shall introduce ourselves. My name is Owen Darkstrider and this is my client, M Mr. Arthur and I'm sorry, Arthur, I don't actually know your last name. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Arthur, Arthur. Arthur Bain. Uh, good day, Captain. Arthur Bain. And we'd like to report an incident that happened last night and inquire about some things. <laughs> an incident? I see. Uh, what? And he kind of gestures for you both to sit. Please join me. And he yep, sits so back down at his desk. So I'll sit and I'll actually pull out the arrow again. Like, okay, not, like, so threatening, but I casually put it out and put it on the desk, and I'll explain yeah, the situation of last night. 
Okay, it's, yeah, it's kind of a bent arrow, you know, it's, it doesn't flinch when you pull out an arrow and set it down. So you just tell the whole story? Yeah, I basically go over the whole story of how like, yeah. I was doing some guard duty last night on some caravans, and... I see, about, we what, time was, about what time was this? He says, if cutting I had off to immediately. Give, it was probably roughly two, somewhere between one and three in the morning. I see. This would be my best guess. It's hard. Like, I can't tell the time in the middle of the night, basically. I see. And can you describe this thing for me? It was right when your shift started, wasn't it? It was uh, about a... Yeah, it was pretty quick into your shift, because you were going around and being perceptive. All right, so I, I the described image of this, like, this sort of crappy arrow being put on the table and be like, Sir, I want you to take a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like a broken arrow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he kind of glances down at it and sits uh, back uh, up ramrod yeah. straight. And, um, I, 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 I gave a description. It was like a small creature. It was like sort of greenish, ugly creature that had wings. Um, and I tell him the most important detail that when I killed the creature with this arrow, it disappeared into a, pretty much a liquid like, there was no body left. After a few minutes, it dis dissolved itself. It melted. Yes. Kind of. I believe back. there would be some of the liquid on the tip of this arrow still. He kind of picks... it went deep into its back. Yeah, he kind of picks it up and sees that... Hmm. Yes, there's something on here. Could just be mud, though. Not that I'm discounting your story, of course, sir. Uh, again, you said this was between one and three o'clock, and that yes, yeah, that was I also, Yeah, I hmm. also when I killed it, it went out a very horrid scream. Screech, no, this this thoughts. thing didn't screech. Really? There there was a scream somewhere else in the city. It oh. wasn't that thing. You were you yeah. were there. You would have known this. The thing didn't okay. didn't scream. I mean, I don't say that then. No, no, I don't mean to correct you. That's but right. do you mention the scream? Uh, I also, you know, I actually mentioned then, as I was, like, chasing this thing down, I also heard a scream during the night, and I have no idea what that was, but scream, for, for this, this, for this to happen and a scream as well, I hardly think the two are coincidental. Yes, I wouldn't think so. And you, sir, were you present at the time of this strange creature being killed? And Arthur says, uh, no, this, um, Orin here is my guard, and he was the one that was on, on duty when apparently this all went down. I just heard of it this morning. I just wanted to make sure everything was being taken care of, you know. It's a, a strange incident, not the first. Mm. And as he says, not the first, yes. On our way to this town, in fact, we were also attacked at a hill section where a mudslide had occurred from a rock creature that also, strangely enough, on its defeat, crumbled into the earth. And I also don't think these two incidents are coincidental mm. either. I see. And they go on my whole, my whole reasoning thing, and I explained before that <coughs> creatures that normally crumble and leave no traces are normal creatures and are normally magical in nature. Hmm. You know, I should ask him if he knows of any <sighs> powerful, deadly renegade currently on chase from the law mages in the town. Hmm. I don't know of any renegade mages. Um, I'm sorry, it was Arthur. You said you weren't present at the um the time of this incident. Arthur kind of shakes his head. No, I'm just... He cuts him off immediately. Then uh, I believe the questions I would have are for Mr. Orin. You may leave. No, I'll give and Arthur he kind of no. He stares pointedly at Arthur. Mm. I'll give, like, Arthur a look, like, it's all right, friend. I will come by the stop, uh, store later to inform you of what happens. Arthur's just you, kind you of like... You should probably uh, go to, um, set up your shop and make sure everything's okay with the... Uh, the uh, cargo and whatnot. Uh, yes, yeah. Um, 
uh, thank you, um, Captain. Uh, if you find out anything, you know, just I'll I'll be in the marketplace. And, you know, you can come tell me. Yes, of course. You may leave. Arthur kind of walks out. So you said, Mister Orin, after uh, after Arthur leaves, you said you heard a scream around the time that you were fighting this thing. Was it? Uh, in the middle of your fight, at the beginning, near the end? I believe it happened near the end, actually. Hmm. Interesting. It, it, it was all pretty much one giant excitement of incidents. I can't say for direct certainty. This thing was... But it definitely wasn't near the beginning of your fight. No, no, no. The beginning of this incident happened in the... I guess what I'll call a stable for caravans... Probably be, like, Where were you staying again? Uh, staying at, I believe it's actually called the uh, Bristle Boar, or Bristling Boar hmm. or something. Yes, they have a, an unbarred garage behind the inn. Hmm. How big again was this thing? Uh, wasn't too big. It was... And I laugh as big, like, obviously it was much smaller than myself. Was it... But... This bit, like he kind of starts putting his hand. Yeah, um, Owen does the hand gesture of the oh, appropriate okay. size of this yeah. creature. So fairly Since small. Since it was attached to my shield at a point. It, I'm sorry? Oh, it, it, it tried to attack me with my shield up, so I have pretty much know how big it was. So. Yeah. Like, I do like the appropriate hand thing. Interesting. Well, it's funny that you would mention that this is possibly a magical creature. We actually had one of our residents die last night. A woman by the name of Maggie was uh, ran the town apothecary and potion shop. She let out a scream between 1 and 3 o'clock and was my, found dead shortly after. Have you ever met this woman before? And go, no, this is my first night in this town. It was last night. We just got in town. Just and you haven't been through setting. the area before? No, this is my first time traveling to this area. I recently come from... Um, no, I'll be honest. Like, we originally came from... Tar- is it Tardis? Tardos? Taurus. 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 So this is where our... Um, my employer's caravan started, and we're traveling through the area, pretty much. Selling his wares, and I, like, I'd be completely honest, I'm not hiding anything from this guard. I tell him, okay. like, our, our route and stuff, and that we're staying in town for three days and then moving on to the next town. And this is the second town on our journey. I see. Well, if you would this... be so kind, I would like you to stay here for the moment. I'm going to... Go join a few of my men who are doing an investigation into uh, Miss Maggie's apparent death. Yeah, as he stands up, I'll stand up as well as, like, being all courteous and stuff. And I'll also say, this is Miss Maggie. Would she any form of caster by chance, or would no spell casters? She was a mage of some, no- of some note. She's the only one in our town, actually. I should say she was. The only mage in town. Yes. Hmm. Like, Why are you so curious s- about mages? Just because well, of this suspected incident with a rock monster? It's like, it's my duty to protect this man, sir. So I'm just trying to inquire all the information I can. If me and my companions can be any help, please do let us know. All right, I've got to stop looking at the chat here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I he just... says, me and my companions being of help, I let out a snort in my sleep. <laughs> yeah, you uh, would be asleep for probably another half hour, by the way. you I rolled for it. You slept in. He missed breakfast and second breakfast. I feel no, no, I mean... I'm no, no, no. in dreams of gold and... Song and dance. Yeah. No, he yeah. he'd probably um, get up around ten AM or so. You guys were just up uh, earlier. But yeah, um as he goes to leave, like I raise my hand just to shake his hand, basically say thank you for seeing me type stuff. Of and course. I put the air away. 
Um, like I said, I would like you to remain here while I go speak to my men. That's not a problem. Excellent. Oh, wait. Here. I'll... Excellent. Uh, if you need any refreshments, ask one of the guards. I'm, you know. I'll say some water would be nice while I wait. Absolutely. Michael, come, bring, uh, bring him some water. Oh, he's come to pass names. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the guard captain strides out. Mm-hmm. You didn't ask I... his name. Boom! <laughs> uh, I never really got that far. Jokes on to, you, I the guess name I was Joe. Captain um, Joe. Yeah, I put the arrow that I showed him away. Mm-hmm. This is basically proof of last night's incident, so I'm keeping it pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he, he walks out, and he's gone probably close to 45 minutes. You get your water right away. Um, do you do anything else in the meantime? Um, I guess I take out my light, light maze and actually try to see if there's anything on it, because I know I smacked the shit out of this thing. You That's did. It. You smacked the shit out of it. There is not really anything on the mace, not like there is on the arrow. The no, thing I... was pretty solid when you smacked it. Yeah. And it's bludgeoning, so it wouldn't do any cuts, so it wouldn't have drawn blood. Um, I give there it a good polish tufts. down and put it away. There are tufts of fur. Perhaps bat fur, perhaps cat fur. You don't know which. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I give it like a quick polish while I wait. Like, I just want to make sure it's clean. Like, oh, yeah, I, the... I, do it, I do it all on my lap so like they know I'm not being threatening or anything. Yeah. So well, I mean, you you get a couple looks from the guards, but they're you know standing pretty far back, and you've got a bunch of weapons and shit on yourself. They haven't disarmed you or anything, so um, yeah, they they go about their business, shrug it off. And after I finish polishing it, I just put it away. Because if I notice the guards looking a bit odd at me, I'm like, I don't want misunderstandings here. Okay. Wait, you say that, or you just put it away? No, I I think it away. Oh. I I think this in my head, and I'm like put it away. All right. Um. Yeah. So guard captain comes back after forty five minutes or so, and um, you see him kind of smirking a little bit. Might be the closest this guy ever gets to a smile. <laughs> Says, uh, "Well, Mister Oren." Um, and he kind of sits himself back behind his desk and says, "Well." He sits down. Sits down as well. Like, obviously, okay. when he enters the room, I stand up. Yeah. Be no curious. Okay. So, he's, you know, he sits down, you sit down, and he's like, Well, Mr. Orrin, an interesting development has come up. We, uh, we were originally looking around Maggie's shop, um, thinking that she may have died due to a murder, <clears throat> excuse me, a murder or a burglary of some type. Um, and we didn't find anything uh, peculiar in our first search. Uh, other than Maggie was bleeding out of her eyes and ears and nose. Quite quite a strange way to die. No other marks on her body. But after uh, after your story, I did a little more searching. And, um, well, my guards are idiots. I quite quickly found a small trap door that had several hidden stolen objects under it. It appears that Miss Maggie may have been using this small creature to rob from passing merchants. Hmm. You said you had no previous affiliation with this woman? Absolutely none. This is my first time in this village, sir. Like, yeah. we, like I said, we only arrived around 4 or 5 in the evening yesterday, and we stayed at the inn for the entire time. Okay. Well, that fits. Most of the robberies were passing merchants, uh... Seems to me to be an open and shut case. Crimes of opportunity. Um, as to your rock monster issue that you ran into, I really can't comment. I'm not sure it fits this case. Um, I don't see what a, a rock being would be able to scavenge that this smaller creature wouldn't be able to get more with more secrecy. However, if you think they're related, you can certainly talk to my guards. Uh, they're currently at Maggie's place. I've given them uh, your description. You're certainly welcome to ask them any questions. They know a little better than I do about the common goings-on about uh, mm-hmm. about this city. 
And as he says this, I'm saying, would you have no objection of me investigating, like, the incident in the, like, where this Miss Maggie lived? For clues uh, and whatnot? No, not at all. I've told my guards that uh, if you wish to ask them questions, that you may. Uh, they'll be there all day looking for more hidden caches of items. Um, as long as you, of course, don't take anything from her household, you're more than welcome to look around. Not at all, sir. I'm a law abiding citizen. I wouldn't do anything like that. I would hope not. And Durian wakes up. And Durian wakes up. <laughs> and Durian feels the need to use the magic shop today. Uh, um, Durian sorry, I'll be wakes up. Back. Thank you very much, sir. And sorry, yes. I didn't catch oh. your name. <laughs> Damn it, I had one. Uh, Captain Ezreal. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ezreal. And I extend him my hand. No Before problem. your eyes, he shrinks three feet and he grows a long <laughs> beard. His his name That's is like, Azrael. I was actually thinking of the League of Legends character. Yeah, no, it's like Azrael. Damn it. That's why I said it. Put me on the um, spot. But he says, oh, wait one moment. Um, I actually had this, and he takes out a key and um, opens up a drawer on his desk and pulls out a small bag and said, I had this uh, posted just a couple days ago as a reward for any information on the um, robberies and appears you've taken down our robber somehow, so here you go. And he holds out a small bag toward you. I gracefully, like, gently take the bag and I say, thank you very much. If I could be <laughs> any more help, really take you'll the be at the wrestling ball he, if he, you need us. He bends down quite. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Um... You said you're in town for three more days, I believe? Is that uh, including today? I believe Mr. Arthur sets up his shop for the first day, and then he'll be doing it for two more days, and I assume after the third day we would stay the night and head, head out in the morning, so... Hmm, yes, traveling uh, at night to be unsafe yeah. these days. Excellent. I will let you know if there's anything more I need from you. Thank you again for your help. Yep, I'll nod and say if I find out anything, I'll be sure to send word. Yes, and I appreciate your uh, quickly informing us of these matters. I'll nod and turn around and casually walk out. Excellent, good day. Smiling. Yep. And as, as I get away from the guards, I actually look at how much is in this bag. <laughs> um, there is... I actually didn't have this rolled up because I didn't think you'd kill the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am so going well. to say there is uh, 25 gold and yeah, 25 gold and 50 silver. On what? Sweet. In this In... bag of money I just got given. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, I'll casually put that with my rest of my gold because this was to my knowledge, a single action of me <laughs> killing this thing. No, no one else knows you have this, so... Yeah. And I was the only one who fought this thing, so... Sure. Um, <laughs> Rub it in, why don't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I casually... A cat bat rat? It was cute um, and fuzzy, it meant no harm, no, and it was laid it. It was clean for best its thing life. Being Beast. Yeah, it was ugly. It was kind it was of a, like a mottled green. Aww, but the ugly, uh, the ugly pets was, are the it best pets. Like more than a cat, actually. Now that I think about it. You're a bulldog person, aren't you, Jimmy? Actually, you no, know, no joke. Bulldog. Good, good call. My fiance and, our, uh, and I <laughs> are talking about getting a bulldog. So nice, nice. They're really <laughs> cute when they're puppies, but they get really ugly yeah, pretty no, quick. That's, the <laughs> puppy part's <laughs> nice, but I want a I want a nasty like slobbering, like not like a pug. I want like a big slobbering nasty dog. <laughs> yeah. My dog. Um, but yeah, so after this information, or I head cat. to. Well, as I head out, I guess I ask for directions to this place with Miss Maggie's or whatever her name is. Yeah, one of the guards points you over, uh, or, you know, explains to you how to get there, and you pretty quickly find it. There are few guards uh, outside. I you see a sign that says Maggie's oh, stop, Magic. Stop, stop. Oh, no, I didn't actually want to head there right Yeah, I was just asking for directions because I was going to inform Arthur first of what happened. Oh, and Then I was okay. going to head over there. 
Yeah, sure. So at this at this point, um, Arthur and Matt and Amareth are set up in the uh, in the uh, marketplace. Um, it's not nearly as big of a an area as the last city, but you know, it's it's probably ten o'clock or so. There's a good number of people out and about. You find them pretty easy. All right, so I. I... Like do the casual hello thing to Amareth and the guys, and I inform Arthur of what happened pretty much. Okay, cool. So we can quick speed through that. You explain uh, yeah. the basics and um. And I go to Amareth and say I'm gonna head over to Miss Maggie's house soon, and I'm gonna stop by the end to get the guys, and we'll let you know what we find tonight. Okay, well sounds wonderful. I'll be here all day. You know where to find me. <laughs> yeah. And then I go back to the end, pretty much. All right, um, Durian, you're probably finishing breakfast at this point. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it was and Orin thing. walks in. I, I and I feel good today, and I'm regaling Cabin. I guess you're with me. Sure, I'll be up. Late, late, late. You're you're waiting for me while I finish my late brunch. <laughs> Cabin, do you tell him about the goings on? Mm. Okay. During, during your watch, did, did anything happen? No, it was silent. Well, did something happen later? Aaron apparently had a run-in with a a, cat, a winged cat. A what, sir? I don't know. He said it was a winged... He said it looked like a cat. Bat cat. His exact words were cat bat, but... I had Orin been drinking the night before? Well, he could have been drinking on watch. I don't know. <laughs> he, seemed, he seemed pretty. Oh pretty, snap! Uh, the sober. smack talk. Little, you know, I remember he was a little out of it. <laughs> he didn't immediately try let, to stab me when me I woke know. him up. Let me know I when I actually walk I know. into this. I know you're not there yet. Interesting. So uh, some sort of flying cat, Anyways, you say? Some something small winged. He he ended up killing it, and it it melted. Oh. It melted like into goo or water, I guess. And melted. And that was that. And then I, I took over watch after him, and I I didn't find anything. But him and uh, Arthur went to go talk to. Orin, you walk in. Did it take anything? I don't think so. Here, Orin. Right, so I walk in. Yeah. I casual, casually head over. Always casual away. with you today. You're not <laughs> doing anything in an official manner. Or no. just informing Durian about your uh, your encounter with the wild beast. Mm. So, yes. Orin, I hear tell you you encountered a flying cat. I've heard oh. of flying pigs, mind you, but I've never mm. heard of flying cats. I wouldn't call this thing a cat. This thing was quite ugly, and I know cats to be kind of adorable. But, um... <laughs> I have no other way of best describing it besides a winged cat bat creature. But, um, mm. Yeah, this thing was in the back of Arthur's caravan last night when I encountered it. Did it and I you? slayed it with this arrow, and I actually showed him the arrow that should still have traces of liquid on it. Yeah, and it's have, basically dried on there. Yeah, it's, it's dried on there, and it's like... Oh, I, look I, at, and, I look at what looks to be just a shoddy broken arrow, and I say... Excellently done, sir. <laughs> and I go, oh, but there's a lot more to go here, yeah. And yeah, I order a drink, and I start telling these guys about the captain, Ezreal, you, and you leave anything what out, you just catch us all up. Yeah, pretty much. I like tell For brevity's sake, he Mackie. catches catches you all up. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. then go after I explain everything to them. I go. So this Miss Maggie apparently was a mage and sent this thing. And I have permission to investigate, so long as we don't take anything and I look, look at both of them. And I gave my word that we wouldn't. Sure, sure, but, sure. But why would a small town mage, however skilled, have it out to be stealing things all of a sudden? And this doesn't explain. You said you brought up the... Uh, the mud creature, the rock creature, but that doesn't explain... It sounds to me, and I really, like, put my head, you know, I'm sort of, like, in the mode of detective now. I say, sounds to me that we don't have just 
a problem with one mage, but more than one. This and, sounds uh, like coincidence. He puts on sunglasses and goes... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I put well, on sunglasses I and I put on my cry from Futurama, and I say, well, what if there is more than one mage in this world? Mm. That's crazy. So, <laughs> I, I don't know where you're going with this, and I've already considered that, I believe. It's not just one mage that might have it out for us, or merchants. That Why would any cause... mage have it out for us? Hmm. I don't know. And I go, I don't know. Why was this mage stealing from every single merchant that was coming in here for the last couple you know, weeks? Do, do any of you have any past dealings with the mage that might be after you? <laughs> Hmm. We've asked Arthur, but we actually haven't asked each oh. other. I have a sister that's a mage, but she's not a bad mage. Like, she was quite gifted in the arcane arts at such a young age. Oh, I didn't... Is that in your backstory? I didn't know that. Yeah, it, it should be. <laughs> oh, I'm just asking if you wanted to insert something. No, no, it sh- no it he be. can... If it's, if it's not... If he's not, if not contradicting something, he can totally make right. up whatever the fuck he wants. Sir, <laughs> it's his backstory. I made notice of certain people in my history, so if it's not in there, I can send an updated one. No, that's cool. I just want to make sure, but yeah. Um. I have met many mages in my time. I have had encounters with elves and many creatures, and I cannot think of anybody... Who well, I've cheated at cards so bad that would want it out for me. Hmm. Same here. I I can't think of someone after me either. Well, well, um, maybe it's. You said area. that we were going to. You you were doing some detective work at the uh, apothecary's house. Yes, yeah, so I was actually about to head over there. If you two would like to come with me, mm-hmm. I want to investigate. Excellent. And I have Captain Ezreal's permission, so it should not be a problem. So we don't take it. Ezreal. In fact, I'm, oh, I'm even going to say it. He, in fact, he actually gave me a small reward for the information of last night. Oh, good for you. Did he really? Well yes. done, Oren. How much was it? It was very little. It was only 25 gold. I plan to use it in the near future to acquire a better bow as... I have real, I real, as of last night's incident, realized that I can't do anything unless enemies are on the ground without a better bow. So I look, I look around. Arthur's not with us, right? Just Orin. No, nope. that's, that's just Orin. Yep, Arthur, Matt, and uh, Amareth are in the market, and of course, Caven. And I and I whisper to them and I say, "There's a good payout at the end of this, but I have." I have my keen, my keen, the elven part of me, my senses are going off. Something is not right here. This, this trip has not been as smooth as simple caravan watching. There's been magic involved, and now we are once again in a town. We've been waylaid in the town itself. Now call me paranoid, but you might need an exit strategy. We've been waylaid? Hmm. So if we require an exit strategy, I have a good one. I'm Do just going to pull out my sword well, and cut a path. I see. We had, a, right. we had a run-in with a... Interesting. ...a cat bat, but... Hmm. I think we're being weird. Yeah. Well, the... Because with what we believe is true with this magic, then this cat bat was obviously a familiar of this Miss Maggie. I was thinking the same thing so when we no more. Well, let's go over to... Cat bats from Miss Maggie will be coming at us because she's dead. Anything that would scream, any 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 humanoid creature that would scream after the killing of such a a foul yet perhaps cute beast would uh, would perhaps be a familiar of some sort. But it seems a coincidence or an unlikely coincidence that something would would uh, attack us, obviously of a magical character on the road, and once again attack us in the town. Mm, I know exactly where you're going. I'll do some investigating the, uh, on that part. Let's head over to the apothecary and see if we can find anything else. Mm-hmm. And well, I'll, leave, do I'll that leave them there because... Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll leave them over there because I got directions. Cool. So on the way... Oh, go ahead. 
I on the no, just qu quickly on the way I whisper to Cabin and I say, um, I say, uh, this. I heard this familiar was was rooting around in the wagon. Perhaps, perhaps it is not us they're after, but perhaps something that Arthur is carrying. Well, I, I did tell him that this Miss Maggie was going after all sorts of merchants, right? Yeah. No, I know. I still whisper this to Cabin. Yeah. Well, well, Darren, I I mentioned it to Arthur this morning. He didn't seem to think any anything special, but yes, Oren looks seems... for the best in people. Oh, I think it seems like something was trying to get into the stop and get into the wagon at two times. <clears> so. I don't okay. Know, maybe if you wanna. Oh. I don't know. I think we should poke around at night, but we are guarding the wagon overnight. We could do let that. let us maybe not soon, maybe not tonight, but let us keep an eye out, you and I, mm -hmm. for the time being. Agreed. Uh, I just forgot. I absolutely forgot about something, but I'll fix that later. Okay. So you guys are heading over to uh, to the shop. Oren's leading you since he knows the general direction, and like I said, you guys pretty easily find it. Uh, there's a sign that overhead that says uh, Maggie's Magics and Apothecary. Mm -hmm. Cute. Right, so I'll, and Magics I'll is spelt with a K like they did in <laughs> yeah. old-timey. Um, right, so I'll... The <laughs> there might be. <Okay. laughs> Alright, so I'll approach one of the guards and tell them who I am and that Cousin Ezreal has given me permission and whatnot to be around here, to look around. Yes, the captain gave you permission to enter and look around. Um, he kind of motions uh, motions you in. And I'll also take this time to ask him, and um, this is really side, really off-side question, but do you know anyone in this town who's able to speak Goblin? Or read Goblin? Guards kind of Look around and uh, and they consult the dice. Um, yes, one of them speaks up and says, uh, "Yes, we have a um, a dwarf and smith in town who I believe can read and and I don't know if goblins really write, but uh, he he understands the language of goblins." Uh, would you mind telling me where I could find this man? I have questions for him later. Sure, and he gives you directions. Of, of an unrelated matter. And I and I pipe in and say, Oren, I do I do speak some dwarven. It might be I might be able to get some more information out of him if you wish it. Oh God. Uh, I I'm just gonna because I wasn't there, so I'm, I'm not gonna metagame it. I'm gonna be like, we'll we'll see when we get there, friend. For yeah. now, let's conduct our investigation. And uh, we look you can can CSI one, no no no. The, the guard immediately speaks up and says, you may go in. These two were not given permission to enter. They are no, 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 sirs. I am, I am merely the, uh, the servant of this good knight here. I just... In uh, that case, your servant can stay outside, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, would you allow my elven friend here? He's quite a well-trained investigator. I just kissed ass for you, man. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, trying, Very I'm well, sir. And I duck away, but I, 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 I give him. No, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna whisper to. My name is Kate uh, Holmes, actually. Yeah. Holmes. I'm, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna mm -hmm. take Darian over the side, give him the letter, and say, um, while we're doing this, go see this dude, see if he can translate the note. And I whisper to him, I say, I, I know this won't jive, and I don't mean it to insult you, but if there's anything valuable lying around, just... This bag is dead. She won't care. Just just push it in. Just push it in your bag. But but I understand if you won't. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to incite anything here, and I take the letter. <laughs> yeah, uh, and as soon as he goes away, it's out of sight. I just face palm and like... Uh, I'm gonna, th I'm gonna buy that guard a drink. <laughs> and be Wait, like, I, do you have I objections? Have if no, oh. the guards made it. No, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I I have or explicit orders from my captain only to allow uh, Mr. Oren in, and only under escort. And and, and, and I shout. To... I shout behind me. Very good, my lord. I'm out. I will go see your your. Your tasks and duties, and I and I bow away in a very servile oh. manner. 
I guess that's right, how sorry. You know what? Handle this. I'm gonna go make sure Durian doesn't make piss anyone else off. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably a good idea. Well, I, I catch up to Durian. Yeah, the guards. The yeah. guards kind of laugh and say, uh, "Your half elf servant isn't too trustworthy, eh?" Uh. <laughs> you know what? I'll be completely candid with this guard. I'll like look at him. And, like to be honest, you're probably right. You're probably actually better off that way. Because I, I, I have a. I have a vow with your captain, and I intend to honor it. He had probably broken the vow for me. I shout I behind in. me, five goblins and a goblin leader! <laughs> <laughs> uh, as he shouts, I go, yeah. Despite his looks, he's actually a great master, though. And I motion to guard to come in with me, like, let's get this done with. Sure. And I go, all CSI on this frickin'. <laughs> all right. You go all CSI on this pl- on and off. What are you looking for? Um, so l- let me describe it quick. This is it, let 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 me describe it quick. It's a a fairly you know small cozy shop. Uh, you see shelves lined with some basic herbs and medicines. Uh, you see shelves behind the counter um, lined with more bottles and stuff. You know it's kind of the inexpensive stuff out on the floor. The more expensive stuff in back. Uh, there's a white sheet on the floor with uh, a bit of bu- blood soaking through, which, um, you know, Is apparently the they... Still yeah. Apparently the body's okay, still I'll there. Make... I'll make um, note of that. Okay, and you can see she was just kind of in the front part of the shop, apparently. You know, um, and then, yeah, behind the counter, um, if you walk back there, can I assume you do? Yeah, I, I'm okay. searching everywhere. I'm yeah, you just you. I'm assuming you're just kind of casing the place. You see that behind the counter, it looks like a a bottom shelf was removed, uh, from the from the counter, and uh, underneath is a little trap door that's pulled open, and there are some things scattered on the counter that look pretty valuable. Uh, a necklace here, a couple rings there, uh, some various gems and jewels. Do, if I uh, notice the rings, do I notice the um, pattern again? Like, uh, no. Do they have the ones, the ones that the goblins had? No, it's more of like gaudy rings with jewels set in them rather than signet rings. Okay. They look pretty, take, pretty valuable. I take it all the stuff on there is stuff they pulled out of this sort of trap door. And I look, at, look in the trap door and I don't see any more. No, there's nothing in there. It's a pretty fair assumption. Alright, so I, I look at all the stuff that's on there and I don't really probably guess I'm guessing I don't find anything of information yeah, I mean, wise. It's it's valuable stuff. Mm, I'm not gonna take it there. <laughs> well no, there are two guards like watching you like hawks. Yeah. So like you can like, kinda I, poke I, I, through I, it and they yeah, don't I, I give a fuss. Stuff. Yeah, so you kinda look it up, pick up a thing, poke through it, don't see any you, well do I, do I notice the gems yeah. over, overly expensive? Like it maybe for payment? Yeah, I mean they're they're bigger gems. Like it's it's valuable jewelry with valuable gems set in them. You know, some of them bigger, some of them smaller. Some of the gems are uh, loose by themselves, and are you know range in sizes. There's a one onyx gem that's really pretty big, like you know nice gem size, but yeah. You know, the rest of the stuff's more your your general jewelry size. Alright, so I'm gonna go over to the body next. And Okay. I'm actually gonna take like pull well, I'm not gonna take the full blanket off, but I'm gonna like look about so it's I can see a back. And I'm actually gonna look at her back to see if there's like an arrow mark or something according on her back from what I'm guessing where I nailed this no. creature. Um, so well, she's she's lying on her back, yeah. um, and you you pull I, back the sheet around her face, and you see that uh, it looks like dried streaks of blood came out of her eyes and her nose and her ears. Right, um, basically, I if I have to, I like lean the body halfway up and check her back just to uh, see. One one of the guards starts saying, "Excuse me, sir, what are what are you doing exactly?" I, I I tell him that the creature that I shot last night was hit in the back. I was just trying to see if there was a 
corresponding mark on her back, perhaps for hmm. this we, creature dying, she died as well. We, I just want to see if there's a wound. Yeah. He says, we haven't examined the body fully, but there were no blood stains anywhere other than uh, what you see around her face. Hmm. You can, you can kind of lift her up and see that there's no blood pooled under her back at all. All right. I, like, like, then check the pockets and say I'm just going to look for some <laughs> notes or letters. Okay, you frisk the body. The guards look a little uncomfortable, but don't say anything. You don't find anything on her. And then, okay, I'm going to ask the guards, hell, like, don't be offended by this. I'm obviously just asking basic questions, but how thorough were you with your... Okay, I, I'm searching this place. Did you find any letters or notes? The one guard looks kind of sheepish, and he's like, well, Captain was more thorough than we were, it seems. Um, we didn't find anything of note. Uh, we haven't dug through all her stuff yet. There are a couple guys upstairs still looking through. Her uh, her um, quarters were up there. I say, like, can you please take me to these people? Of course. And they escort you upstairs. You kind of go behind the counter and through a door and then up a small, narrow set of stairs. Actually, were, they, were these the iron tree guards downstairs? No, there were some outside yet. Oh, cool. I was just making sure I was going to say if, there was, if these were the iron tree, I was going to tell for one of them to stay behind. Nope. Nope. Hey, never mind. So you get upstairs, you see kind of a small bedroom, some windows overlooking the street uh, out front, outside, and a uh, desk, a mirror, dresser, the usual kind of stuff. Right, so I'll ask these new guys that are apparently up here if they found any letters or notes in the inner quarters. Nope, they haven't found anything. You can see the... The room's pretty well tore apart. They're, they're looking through everything at this point. You know, hmm. clothes have been, like, looks like the bed was tossed and then kind of slid aside, and then stuff was thrown out of the dresser, and the drawers are kind of half hanging out. And they're kind of like patting down the walls as you come in. I'll ask if you found anything else then besides letters, or no letters. Nope. They say no, nothing, nothing of note. Few correspondence to, I think her family members, but may I have a look at those? Sure, they let you look at them. No, I don't read anything abnormal about it. Um, you. Read a couple letters, you know, like I said, correspondence to family mostly. Um, one makes a mention of, uh, there's just a sentence fragment that stands out that's like, I might be coming back to the area soon to see you, but, you know, nothing to imply that it would be anything more than a visit. Do they have, um, like, where they located anywhere on the notes? Um, no, actually, it doesn't. Damn. You, it, you can tell it was a letter to her sister. Hmm. Alright, so, sister... Like, I'm saying, like, just generalized thinking that perhaps her sister might be also a, a mage. You know, I'll make note of that without any proof. It's just yep. a theory. Nothing, nothing mentioned in the letters. And then I just start literally tossing any other rooms that I find around to see if I can find anything. Like I said, I go full CSI, so if you yep. like, when I cut through Cape and yeah, yeah. for, for throwing around. For brevity's sake, you don't find anything else of interest. Hmm. You yeah. did find um, the, like, the envelope that the letters were sealed in, but it just had a two address and what looks like a broken... Sealing wax seal. There's there's no corresponding from address, you know, in case the the mail needs to get redirected back to sender. They didn't okay. have that in these days. Well, I'll like thank the guards for their helping me around this building for their for obviously their work. They're doing a pretty thorough job now of searching this place. All right, and I'll yeah. say, um, she's an 
Jesus, an alchemist rat? Yeah, I mean, there are uh, a does bunch of... A Sorry, does she actually have, like, a workshop or place where she actually does all the stuff? With potions yeah, and herbs? Uh, behind the counter, there's, like, there's a... Um, kind of, like, the staircase to go up, and then in back is a little workshop. It's, you can see some stuff scattered around, some leaves and branches here, some berries there, a couple of vials of liquid that you don't know what they are. And a lot of herbs, like I said, out in the front portion of the shop, yeah. and then behind the counter there are various vials and stuff, potions and whatnot. Uh, I'll, I'll do a quick look in there and then end my little investigation. You see berries and leaves and things. Nothing, nothing yeah. obvious. It looks yeah. like the area has been tossed a bit. Tables yeah. kind of askew. Some drawers are pull, pulled out. Nothing um, that you notice. All right, so I'll thank the guards then for their cooperation. Okay. And I'll head out. All and right. I'll actually, head towards Amareth. Cool. You get to Amareth. She's still on guard duty. I'm yes, sorry, I am. Amareth. That's I okay. Roll I rolled for it, and no one tried to steal stuff with a well-armed elf there. <laughs> That's fine. And you were just intimidated I, by me. I, I formed the three of them. I mean, um, three of them, I mean, her and cool. Matt and well, Arthur. While you're catching them up, why uh, don't we switch over to Durian and Cabin, who are on their way to uh, a smith, a dwarven smith that you are told can speak goblin. Yes. You get to the smith's place. <laughs> what do you do? Gaben? I, well, I say, Durin, you, you have the letter, right? I do. And I walk in and I I greet the uh, dwarf in, uh, the dwarf in um, smith. And I, not very formal, but I say, Master, Master Dwarf and Smith, uh, we come today with both a... a question about some information perhaps you can provide and uh, perhaps to inspect your wares as well. All in, all in Dwarven I say this. Yeah. Alright, so you guys walk around. It's kind of an open air smithy. You can see he's pounding on like a, like a sword that's nice pirate hat. Love it. <laughs> he's, he's hammering out a sword as you come up and kind of stops as you approach. He's like, oh, you top of the morning to you. What can I help you with there, lads? So I say in Dwarvish, I said, well met, and uh, and uh, we have we we were heard from some garbs. Perhaps you have some some knowledge of 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 goblin speak. Ugh, goblins! And he spits on the ground. Those I'm... foul beasts! I fought them for most of my life. Beat them back uh, around this area about a hundred years ago. They're popping up again. You need a good sword. I've got some great goblin fighting swords. Perhaps we will take you up on that. I, uh, we've only faced them several times in the past couple of weeks, but I respect a man. I respect a man who's met them for centuries now in battle, and I give ah, him the yeah. nod. Yeah, and you can tell he's you know got some liberal gray streaks in his beard. You know, fully bald on top. Most dwarves are. Just regardless of age. But he says, ah, excellent. Well, I'll take a break here quick. Why don't you sit down have a glass of water? Tell me about your uh, battles. It's always good to hear of goblins getting carved up. Well, we have... He we invites have. you to sit down with some, some cool refreshments. And I say thank you, and I... And Is I um, still all in Dwarven still? Yes. And I, and I, and I, <laughs> I gesture to him, and I say, please, I would... I would not sit without you joining us. This is this is your smithy. I would not sit and and be just a guest in your in your uh, your household. Oh, not at all, Sonny. Need the break anyway. Please, and he uh, gestures you down, pulls out some. Uh, what would a dwarven smith have? He pulls out. Uh, he's got some Rough fruit. God. Yeah. Okay. Fruit. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I I pull Cabin over and I say. Um, my friend here, and I say this in common, and I say my friend here is named is named Cabin. He is he is known recently, but well known now for for his uh, for tactics and slaying ogres, and uh, 
I don't want to say he that. Says he says yeah, ogres. He says ogres. Yeah, I say <laughs> ogres and um. Ah, they're a foul beast lately, too. So. Ah, yes, ogres are foul beasts too. He says in common. Well met, Cabin, sir. Thank you. It was actually I have fought some ogres, but it was actually a giant. But all the same. Ah. My apologies, Cabin. I uh, I under I underbuild your story. I apologize. It's okay. Just ter <laughs> foul beasts all deserve to die. I, I agree. Ah yes. So we oh. we we have uh and and Sir Dwarf, I have not gotten your name. I apologize. I am Durian Durian the Bard. Ah, Derricket in the Black, Smithy of this town. How do you do? How do you do? Ah, please tell me about your travels. I don't hear a battle much anymore. No one wants to talk these days. It is quite unfortunate. It is not. There is not much to tell. It is a. Could have been a sad tale not far back um, in the land of Taurus. We were, we were, we were told of a, a daughter who had been taken by goblins on the road, okay. and it was and a. For, for end, brevity's sake, you you give a. a I, cool give, I give him the tale of the, the goblins there. Yeah. I tell him of the goblins then again attacking us on the road through okay. Palatinus. I imagine you don't forget that you killed the first goblin leader. Uh, Actually, I, I think I, both I of them. To be honest, uh, yeah, I know Cabin's here, so I mentioned that okay. that there are many goblins and I slayed a few, but there were many more, and that I have good companions with me, basically. So I don't, oh, okay. don't underbuild them. All right, yeah, the the Durgadin kind of eats that up. He he always likes a good battle story, and you know everyone got out safe, happy ending. He likes it. He's eating it up. Good. And, ah, and I think, yes. I, and I and I, I I push him a letter, and I say this. We came across this actually in a goblin's possession, and uh, we have some other other goods that are perhaps uh, related. We don't know what to make of the puzzle pieces yet. Perhaps you can fill us in if you know anything of goblin this this rough script. And so I push it towards him. Hmm. And he kind of looks at it and holds it back and forth a little bit to focus on it better. And he's like. Well, it's definitely goblin, and uh, he writes like a five-year-old child. Yeah. Good lord, I've never seen so many misspellings in my life. Um, I didn't realize goblins knew how to spell to begin with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Always surprising that one. Um, yes, I can. I can translate this for you. Um, let's see here, and he kind of he like. Says, wait here one moment. And he heads in and and grabs a comes back with a graphite pen and or a graphite pencil and some clean paper and says, all right, let's see here. I'll transcribe it for you. Even he says, take your group south along the coast, coast, coast. Fucking goblins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with, with Gornuk's Gornuk? Probably a goblin name. G with Gornuk's cave base and the the boss sending the meatheads? That can't be right. Let me... Say that part uh, again. Uh, again. Yeah, definitely meatheads. 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 I'm not sure what to make of that. To harass the bald... Oh. Um, that's slang for elf. Uh, to harass the elves, you should have easy pickings. Wait, wait, uh, no, there's a scratch out. Uh, to harass the elves in the east, you should have easy pickings. Signed, Grimgar. Grimgar. Grimgar? Grimgar. We'll say Grimgar. Grimgar. Interesting. Yeah, so that, let me... Out, let me out kinda, of game, can you, like, restate the whole message? Yeah, he, he's going to do that. He he writes it down for you nice and says, uh, this is what I believe it says. Um, it says, take your group south along the coast with Griphook's cave, no, Gornuk's cave base, and the boss sending the meatheads to harass the elves in the east. You should have easy pickings. Signed, Grimgar. Everyone is dutifully writing that down. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll actually... 
I'll I'll actually add the note um, since you got a direct translation. Oh. I'll add that as an item on roll twenty. Thank you. Yep. Yay. I was trying to write and keep up, but your your uh, your dwarven slash Scottish accent is is op. Great. So. <laughs> oh, it was great. It was very good. No, no. I've been working on it actually. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. You, you play a dwarf in another campaign, don't you? I do not, but. No. Uh, <laughs> I should. But I, I should. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah, he translates the uh, the note for you. Durgadan, we can't repay you enough. Oh, no, re- you killed some of these bastards. That's all the repayment I need. <laughs> Though, if you're in the market for weapons, I wouldn't say no to you looking at my wares. I would not insult you by putting money on the table, but show me your wares. Absolutely. You can see here, and he, he, you know, it's kind of just an open-air smithy. He probably usually sells the swords to, to um, you know, weapons merchants. But, you know, he's got a few on hand. I got here uh, some nice uh, long swords, some short swords, great swords, rapiers. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? Oh, I, excellent I... ransoir that I made. Would carve things up like a turkey. Oh, a, a what was the last one? Ransoir. It's a big speary type thing. Okay. Uh, my ears perked up at the rapier, and I ask him about that. Ah, yes. And he pulls out uh, one and kind of twirls it around a little bit and holds it out to you. Check the balance on that, baby. So I grab it, and mm-hmm. it's kind of within my, my proficiency range, but I've never worked with it before, so I'm... Well, uh, if it's within your proficiency, you've trained with it, so you mm-hmm. at least know the basics of how to use it. So, uh, you find it to be a nice weapon. Okay, well, so I, I, I do a little repost, and I say, Durgadan, this is a fine, a finely made weapon. Ah, I, uh, thank you. I would, like, I would like you to make an offer for it. And, I, and, I, and then I turn, before you do, before you make a total offer... Caben, do you have anything too you would like to uh, perhaps Durgadan ask Durgadan for? We uh, perhaps could make him. You finished my fruit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're Caben, shovel the fruit in your mouth and ask him about your weapons. Yeah. He's just a a sword sell or a blacksmith, right? Yeah, just a smith. He's that's that was everything he had: long yeah. sword, short sword, great sword, uh, rapier, and a rancoir. Yeah, Let's see, it all, it all looks like Fine craftsmanship, but I've I've had a long sword I've been using for quite a while. Ah, yes, I get attached to many of my weapons myself. It's understandable you wouldn't want to part with it. So I uh, I tell I tell Durgadan to make an offer. Ah, well, it's you that needs to make the offer, laddie, but uh, I do usually sell them for uh, right around 20 gold. However, I do notice that you have a short sword on you. I imagine, would you want to keep two, or...? No, I was actually going to say, I have a Hmm. fine short sword here, and I pull it out, and I say, it's it's something that I I don't use very often, so it's in good condition. Perhaps yeah. you could you could put this against the uh, the cost of the rapier. Say, yep. say, uh, say this is a about a fifteen gold short sword, and so I give <laughs> five gold for the rapier. Here we go again. <laughs> Here we go again. I'm sorry, laddie. I'm sorry. Uh, oh yeah, short sword usually isn't worth nearly that much. New. No. This is not a an an unimpressive specimen to say the least, and he kind of. Works it around, holds it up, balance a little. Kind of looks over the condition. He's like, uh, "Well, laddie, I would normally normally send some sell something like this." Now the accent breaks down. Damn it! <laughs> I would normally sell something like this for eight to ten gold new. I'd take it off your hands for a five gold discount on the uh, the rapier. I tell you, friend, that that short sword is is. Unused, but of fine quality, I was assured. So how about this? <laughs> I give you 12 gold, and because the short sword is in such good condition, we perhaps call it at that. Uh, roll for condition. 
Nah, it's not in perfect condition. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's like, ah, I'm sorry, laddie. I, I really do think uh, 15 gold and a short sword would be a fair price for a rapier of uh, of that quality. I, I apologize, but a uh, man's got to make a living. We can't all go around slaying goblins. Um, I wish I could join you. Of course, of course. How about this? 14 gold, the, sh the sword... <laughs> And you join me in the this evening at the Bristling Boar, and you can you can meet some of my companions who regale you some stories. You'll I think you'll find them quite impressive. They might be interested to meet you, someone who's well traveled as yourself. Mm. Kind of looks over the short sword again. You guys were pretty nice to him. Pretty nice, God, yeah. <laughs> He's an asshole, man. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. He did eat his fruit. He's like, um, you know what, laddie? If the drinks are on you, I'll, I'll, I'll make an appearance. I would appreciate it, and if you do not, well, tis your loss. I have good, I have good traveling companions. That I assure you, right, Cabin? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's just oh, munching God. on fruit. <laughs> ah, I think we can make that a deal, and he kind of claps you on the back. All right, so, so I, I push over the sword and the uh, the fourteen gold. Yeah. Sorry, dwarven accents apparently hard on the vocal cords. Yeah, sure. He, uh, you buy a, uh, a rapier, a rapier, and sell your short sword. Excellent. Cool. Anything else? Uh, I mean that that his stocks were pretty limited, so I assume there's nothing else. No, no, no. I, I I give him, I give him a fine bow as the dwarven people would appreciate. You know, getting kind of getting down on their level. You know what I mean? Like nothing, uh, nothing right. insulting. I just like. Okay. I was gonna no, no, say. No, I'm not this. Okay. Oh, no. I'll, I'll, I'll clarify <laughs> outside a game. I give him a bow that the dwar the dwarven people would appreciate. Okay. Well, you said nothing insulting, so that was enough clarification. He is not insulted. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Says, good day to you, lads. Best of luck against those little nasties. Thank <coughs> you. Amen, brother. At this point, I also head back to the inn after my conversation. Okay. Excellent. Do we so, head back? All right. Everyone is filled in. Um, your rapier is da, 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 the same weight as your short sword. Mm -hmm. Does the same damage, but has a five percent higher crit chance. Mm -hmm. So it is yeah, a I, nice weapon. I, I am. I like it better. Yep. And it's it's well made. It's nice craftsmanship. It's not like a masterwork weapon or anything, but it's, it's a nice sword. You're pretty happy with it. Unless you're not. I don't mean no, to speak. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. All right. Cool. You guys uh, get back. Um, Amareth, you have a completely unexciting day. Yep. Yep. And, uh, yeah, everyone meets back at the end for the night. She prays. Yeah. Hey. So did a lot of praying to quarrel on the Rethian, you know. All right. But I assume that, like, we just fill each other in with everything that happens in the day. Yep. I let them know that there could be a sister of this mage at the river, not that means anything. Because we thought that there may have been a second mage for the one with the rock golem. Where did you write down the uh, the letter? I, I am typing that up right now while you fill each okay, other. Okay, so so I, I immediately bring up this letter. Yeah, I, I take okay. it and read it. Yeah, and I, and I say, I don't know what this means. I don't know if it suggests us, or if it was meant for someone else, but it does have some odd parallels to our journey thus far, so I don't know what we could have done that could have intercepted it if we intercepted something that well, it, the minions of this Grimgar are pointing to, but... Well, it mentions elves to the east. Well, Perhaps we're not we are heading east, but there's only two L's. Yes, but but it could does not necessarily. 
It could be a. Should okay, be in, in in yeah. It should be in uh, oh, your guys' journal. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. Hmm. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, so, so I relay this, and I say, I believe that Gormuk's cave was the one that where we uh, saved Elizabeth, but... Perhaps, yes. But it doesn't mean that the entire force was defeated there, or I think indicative of our first day's travel, where we were waylaid, and now we are... We have elves among us to the east, and if not, then there's at least items that we have acquired, and I sort of look around the table that are perhaps of interest, so perhaps there are still some forces of this Grimgook, it, Grimgar is perhaps a, uh, a more powerful person who, or goblin who is, uh, has some influence over the southern la so southeastern lands or whatever. Perhaps, well, perhaps. I, did Emma actually tell us about the thought she found out about the ring? So I don't want to metagame this. No, I did not. Alright, so um, I also didn't tell you about uh, what I found off of Durian's scroll, so you don't know either of those things. Yeah, you you ha Durian that, uh, still has the scroll. Case, so mm -hmm. He like... didn't give it to you. Okay. No, but I didn't. I didn't do the read uh, magic yet. Cause, okay, you know, yeah, okay. So you, you oh. guarding things. I don't know that you have. I don't know that you have read magic, but you didn't like. Well, I didn't lose track of the scroll at any point, did I, Travis? No, you still have the scroll. Okay, that's random. Oh, she could have tried to steal it. It could have. Yep. As far as still I know, it's been changed. All right, now. Nope. Travis, do I know what Gornak's Gornak's cave is? Where that is? The the note is completely transcribed. Right. It's so I, I I can read that, but mm -hmm. I guess do do I know like what cave where the location of that cave is? Do, do I know that was the cave we? What's on the note is on okay. the note. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, um, I guess I was asking, is it like, is that like an actual name that everyone uses? I, I'm assuming it's just a goblin name. They're just calling it that, so, okay. Yeah, um, Durgadin mentioned that Gornuk and Grimgar were goblin names. Okay. Or he thought they were. He's pretty Yeah, sure. and they sound, sounds enough like goblin. I think everyone would recognize that. Yeah, I just didn't know if it was like a landmark that some of us might have known about outside. So I go, I go to the uh, bar. T I say, I say the part. I say, we're, we're, we're uh, we don't have much information. I, I'm gonna hypothesize that the Gornox Cave is where we rescued Elizabeth. But perhaps a little bit of discreet inquiry could uh, give us some more information. I'm gonna ask the bar bartender if he's ever heard of this location. Okay. Elves in the cool. East. And uh, I'm starting to think. Do you think um, that means? Like, is anyone? I mean, we, we know have of, like a greater elf population in the east, or? Oh, you've heard of the nation of Cien, which you mm. you know the basic location of that nation. Yeah. Okay. Up north. Yes. I'm starting to think that the elves in the uh, elves in the east might actually have something to do with the kingdom of Cien. Yes, but that's further north than here. I mean, in terms of east, we're at the farthest east here. And well, the, have you the, met the map that we have? Isn't like the whole map, so I assume that's not north. It's more east in terms of the world yeah, map. Yeah, you guys know. Um, I've labeled the political map here with all of the countries that you at least yeah. know the names of. And this is of the continent that you're on, which you can't really say it's east or west because you know world is round. Right. Well, have any of us been outside of this continent? Uh, you have. At least <laughs> two, at least two, possibly all of you have come from different areas. Yeah. Different continents. Yeah. No. So we no. would have an idea if this was east or west in terms of continent or land mass. You're... I mean, you're on a globe, so they're... Uh, this is generally considered, I guess, to be the western continent, so if we zoom out to the world map, Whoa. You, got, you guys are oh, down here. The big reveal. Yeah, the big... <laughs> well, 
So this, I mean, the continents themselves are fairly well known. You guys are basically right here. And generally speaking, most consider the landmass you're on to be the western one. So the Tellurus, the continent you're on, and then the other continents, which, yes, I haven't named yet. God damn it. <laughs> so, uh, I need to do that, yeah. So I, I don't have a preference, but I think... I'm not speaking, or I'm not speaking alone here. Everyone, I'm speaking yes. for everyone here. That I don't, I don't know where I've come from in terms of this continent. I have um, a rough idea. Where I, am. I was totally gonna work that out with all of you. Okay, good. That's that's fine. The next part let's, of our work, let's work it out later. Yep. It's not yep. that important right yeah, now. Yeah. I wanted to do it this week because I thought this no, might no, come I up, know. but you knew yeah, this. Yeah, it's been busy. Up, <laughs> We temporarily forgot. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I say, it's been a long I, day. because I don't think this would change even if I knew where everyone was from. Yeah. But and I, say, I don't want to say, say who's from where because we might want to change it, and I don't want to reveal that. Before. Yeah, I say, I say we're in we're in largely humanoid lands, and a group of elves is telling. I don't know if this this re this refers to us. This note refers to us. I doubt it. Because we found it after the fact, yeah. Mm. But I will, I will go ask around discreetly to see if uh, the cave means anything to anybody. And if well, there's hold on, hold on. Before you do that, though, I'd like to bring something up. Um, when I talked to the elves the other day about the uh, signets that I have, um, one of them mentioned that it, it looked like it was possibly from Cien. They're mm. not sure you know, which house it belongs to, but they said that it looks familiar and it might be from there. I mean, we found it on goblins earlier. Perhaps that has something to do with it. Maybe the goblins had gone a bit north to Sien. It is in the... I mean, it's a bit north than us, but it's still the east part of this continent. Yes. Yeah. So perhaps that has something to do with it. Fair point. I'm starting to think that after this mission with Arthur, we should perhaps travel north check out Sienna a little bit. I agree, but my only concern is that if it's just coincidence, if we picked up on this trail after it happened, where said elves were pursued for easy game in the east, why are we still being pursued? And I don't think that our our tough journey thus far has been a coincidence. Well, we haven't and really I, any I look, goblins on the eyes are to be, to be fair, friend, tough journeys have been happening across this entire continent. Not like in Taurus and Seattle and out of rock, friend. We've heard of, we've heard of, we've heard multiple times, and I and I relate what I've heard over the past couple of towns of kobolds of cowardly, cowardly kobolds who are run off with any big scare. We have not met with any cowardly foes yet. We've met with sizable goblin force and with some sort of magical creature. Hmm. We, I mean, the goblin. We the, Let's see. We had one run with the goblins where we went to them. The second one was in the middle of the woods. We haven't run into any goblins in what four, five no, days, four or five we days. Met, on our first journey, mm -hmm. the rail guard, we met we met goblin, several yeah, goblin that's... archers and about four or five goblin fighters. That's right. a large that was marauding force. That was, was still close goblin. to the area where we went to the cave. That could all been just localized. Could yeah. be. I mean, I'm not convinced goblins are after us at this point, I guess. I don't know that anyone's after us. I'm just trying to highlight that. We've had a rougher time even than the, than the rumors have suggested. Yeah. True. It's well, been a lot more fighting than I, than I thought it would be. It, it's to my knowledge that it's not us. I was on a caravan mission before I met you guys, and we went into incident. And with Cobalt, actually, I believe it was. Um, mm -hmm. You could check my um, back history for this. Yeah, but, uh, it, it was Cobalt. Yeah. It seems to me that it's just all caravans in particular in this nation, in this continent, seem to be under threat, which makes me to believe that perhaps if there is a greater foe at there, they're trying to hamper supplies between the states of this continent and cause friction. Which really? is even more reason to go. It'd be interesting that goblins are getting involved in the politics of man. That that tensions. It's, it seems a, an odd coincidence that between Taurus and Palatinus, there's tensions arising at the same time that attacks are 
come in, yeah, come in, coming into frequency. And forget not that in Taurus, I didn't meet with a mirror on my way where I met the party in Rebesh. I met on the road not an insignificant force of not only goblins but war riders. So hmm. things the, things, the these goblins are not, were these are the not road. casual and depraved groups of raiders. These are something seems to be afoot, and I don't know what it is. And I'm not saying that it's against us, but we're caught up in it. Well, the only real query we have is this note and this ring. And from what we can tell, this ring is probably from Cien. So Possibly, if yeah. these goblins have at least been to lead to follow. And perhaps these meatheads are referring to kobolds because they're a mangy munch <laughs> of... I, I guess they're like wolves... Half like I don't know. Would you actually classify a couple as like a they're, half they're lizardy wolf goblin lizardy? Okay. They're they're not wolves or goblins at all. They're like little lizard guys, about two two and a half feet tall. You know this. You ran into them. Yeah, I can actually. Um, you ran into them, so I can give you a picture of them quick. So yeah, that'd um, be really helpful. I'm trying to figure out what a meathead could be. It's not these whole guys. conversation separate of Arthur, right? Yeah, but sitting in the accent. And I'm going to post this to everyone because Oren can easily describe them to you. Yeah, I'm going to give you the, like, the biggest description physically possible. Oh, terrifying. <laughs> okay, so they're not meatheads, but um, perhaps them. maybe a meathead is referring to something a bit bigger, and I'm actually going to look at Caven at this one, and perhaps much taller. Maybe a lot more stupid. What do you look at me for? <laughs> oh... You're known as a giant slayer, are you not? Yes. Sorry, repeat what you said. I missed... So I perhaps the out. terminology in the letter, because I've fled the letter by now, because I took it off during quickly and gave it to Amref. Uh -huh. um, a meathead perhaps means a giant or an ogre of some description. Something big, stupid, and tall. Meaty. Buffy. Big. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Call it what you will. Sending the meatheads to harass the elves. Well, have I heard of giants been referred to as meatheads before, Travis? You've heard giants <laughs> been referred to as a lot of things. Um, well, this okay. I'll pro say, probably not that specific. Suckers. I'll say this does not stand out to me as specifically giants, but it seems something stupid but strong. So it could be. And I offer, I offer at this point, I say, meatheads might just mean the lowly troops. Yeah. It could yeah. just be a, a vast infantry that are... We, we, have a note, we have a note signed by a, probably, according to our friend, a goblin named Grimgar. May or may not have slain him as the goblin leader, but there's a boss, too, who we have not met, who's giving instructions. Mm, well, as much as I'd love to debate this, there's not much we can really do. Our hands are tied with Alpha at the moment. Yep. We can only theorize and investigate. I'm just, I'm just advising the party to be wary. We yes. are, we are, yes. we are here well, to serve, but I think we are here to serve our interests as well, and we do not want to end up in a situation we cannot get out of. Yep. Let's keep our eyes open and let's ask about yeah. in the towns we stop by, maybe. More Perhaps if we travel there. further north, we'll learn more. Constant yes. vigilance. But I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then I'm gonna practically, you know, buy Matt a couple of drinks again for the other day. Yeah. And head to bed. All right. Does um. Our dwarven friend ever show up? Yeah, he does. He actually uh, comes by and wants to to meet the whole group. It's before or after Oren leaves. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is before. Like Good. he comes at, you Good. know, more of an eight p.m. Um, whereas Oren wouldn't go to bed quite that early. I don't. No, know. about nine, nine thirty. So I say I, 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 pull, I pull Dirk Dan over and I say, Oren, I would like you to meet a friend I met today. This is Dirk Dan the Smith. Dirk Dan, this is Oren Darkstrider. He's a fine warrior and he can tell you many tales of of slaying goblins and other foul beasts. Oi, excellent. Oh, excellent. Glad to meet you. And yeah. I assume you spend the night regaling Durgadin. You know what? 
and they tell me like they obviously tell me this is the guy who um translated yeah that translated that. yeah I shout him the drinks some nice guy and okay, I, I thank him for his help and whatnot and I have a gale of my tails of how I've cut a goblin down the lip down in two of a single cleave. I, I join the like, I join the party no, there party. and I'm an attentive listener. Okay. And cool, how I yeah. killed a kobold in a single swing by literally decapitating him half vertically. Nice. Do you and then um, I, tell, I tell him about last night as well. And how I killed this felt beast with an arrow. Okay. Just yeah, he uh he totally eats all that up. He's loving the war stories. You said you're buying him drinks? Yeah. Okay. Do you keep <laughs> buying him drinks? Because he's a dwarf. Like, do you keep <laughs> buying buy, him drinks? I, 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 I buy him drinks for, for the hour and a half that I see him before I go to bed at 9.30. Okay. Like I stop during the next morning. All right. So you explain to him that, uh, you know what? Let's actually roll for this, and I'm going to say up. Let's... Yeah, okay. He he knocks back about four drinks uh, in that time. Which is only 16 copper. It's it's pretty much nothing. Yeah, that's, that's right. Their drinks are cheap. Um, so, yeah, he, you regale him with some stories. You lament that you have to be on guard duty. Um, are you guys then not guarding the wagons? Let mm, me put it this way. Uh, Arthur would like you to still guard the wagons. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like Emma guarding all day. I think that she should probably get some rest. Yes, I, I should. That the three, the three of us will probably. So I've been with the the drinking crew, but yeah. Arthur comes over and sort of like look looks plaintive and pathetic about these wagons. I'll say I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I mean, Arthur's I think that might be an and pathetic this whole time. He's changing his whole tenor. No, he's he's a pretty upbeat person. He didn't really like the rock thing, but then again, neither did you. He's so. hidden every fight we've had. Right, yeah, and he's not in a fight. He's in the middle of a crowd. He's working it. He's schmoozing. He's liking it. He hides. Okay, so I say... <laughs> say after an hour of when, say, watch normally should have been started, and Arthur's looking mm -hmm. pretty upset, I say, Arthur... I've got it. Go rest your head. I will take care of the wagons tonight for a couple hours. And I look at uh, I look at Cabin and I say, "Will you relieve me in uh, about two or three hours?" Um, actually, he suggests like I, I actually step before Cabin even answers. I said, "Cabin, you are on duty tomorrow, aren't you?" I am, so I should probably take. Should I take the first one? Uh, no, I was gonna suggest that just me and uh. Durian take two hour shifts or something. Oh. And we'll just, just rotate two hours the whole for the night. You... Yeah. And, and I sigh so and I say We can sleep we can sleep there. Yes, I will take it. Fine. Fine. But Thanks, Durian. But, I really appreciate this. But Oren <laughs> but Oren, bring me something strong at the end of my shift. <laughs> you can fine. always bring a flask out. No, I, I actually Did you don't. say that out loud, Amareth? <laughs> Perhaps, yes. <laughs> Arthur looks at you and says, I'd prefer you not to bring a flask out. <laughs> prefer, uh, I'd prefer yeah. everyone have their full faculties about that. Yeah. So I, I draw oh, okay. my... I, I draw my rapier, like, in the bar, but not in a way that's, like, threatening. I just sort of, like, pull it out a little bit and I show everyone. I say, I'll be sober. I've I have a mind towards battle this evening, and I sort of march out. <laughs> Self-important yeah. way. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Alright, so we're just going to do two four-hour shifts then. And well, I call that four-hour or four-two-hour? Four four-two-hour? Four two uh, four two four four two no, 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 two-four-hour. Two-four-hour? Two okay. Four hours. okay. So that's the first four-hour shift then. Cool. And, uh... Outside, I uh, I actually like I pull out my flute and I start playing so I don't like get sleepy or whatever. Yeah. Okay. He, he, he's Do you try the to charm the passerbys? No, no charming. Just like, see a pretty lady of the night. <laughs> I'm not. Flute for her. I'm not getting like tired. In other words, I'm not like sitting around being mopey tonight. I'm I'm jazzed. Just playing the blues. <laughs> uh, yeah. I go to sleep. So cool. 
you guys do Always that. Always fall asleep too. Yep. All right. Everyone eventually goes to sleep. Durgadin has a few more drinks with you guys, and eventually he heads off. Uh, yeah, so Durian, you get through your shift. Oren, you come down. Do you bring him something strong? I bring him some coffee, because unfortunately he can't drink just yet. Oh, that's terrible. He drink coffee? He wants that's to go terrible. To I'm caving to give me something strong. <laughs> yeah, coffee's strong. This is not the Caven, Caven, not you do-gooder. I'm sleeping. Caven's <laughs> uh, not taking a watch. I though. thought it was being Caven, yeah. sorry. No, Caven's no, got... No. Oh. I'm okay, well, tomorrow. by the way, here's here's my flute <laughs> song that I'm playing. Yes. And he comes out. <laughs> ah! I was waiting for the Are you sure you don't have an ocarina? Travis I'm, the other I'm song. just back in it. That's it. <laughs> I, I actually was whistling the Lon Lon Ranch theme, but yes. that works as well. <laughs> uh, I, I knew where you were going, and yep. I didn't get to where I wanted to. Comes out. As I like it. Fates in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Oren, you take your shift. Yeah, and I do exactly. Does he give me coffee, yeah, really? I, <laughs> no, I give you like. I'll be honest. I, I, because your shift is over for the entire night. I give you somebody. Oh, whoa. Like, uh, uh, some lesser <laughs> ale, <somebody>. some description. <laughs> some what? Some lesser ale, some description that I just round up quickly. Some Nyquil. Okay. okay. Some Nyquil. I, I grab it. And I look at him, I don't say anything, and I shake his hand. And I say, you... And I don't say anything. I just I look <laughs> at him and I shake his hand. I say, get some rest. We might have a busy day tomorrow. Yep. Yep. All right. Oren, your shift goes uneventfully. Yeah. Everyone wakes right. up. And I'd like to take just a quick break, um, and then we'll probably try and finish this up by... Uh, you know, I always say 11, but it's probably going to be 11, 20, 11, 30 my time. So. <laughs> well, I mean, it's Well, funnily enough, there. it's already yeah. 11, 20. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Our time zone. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's like 1, 21 my yeah, time. I, I'm good for yeah. another hour if we need it. I'm down for another okay. hour. Yeah, I'm you good too. For yeah. Another hour? Yeah, I'm I can go it's as only 8.20 right here. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, cool. See you guys in a okay. few minutes. Yep, West Coast, right. Worst Coast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Bam. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Shots fired again. See you guys in a bit.